Hey there, and welcome to the second chapter of the plant microbiome module. Within the last chapter, we introduced the plant microbiome in general, its transmission, assembly and functions. Today, we would like to translate these facts onto an economically very important crop, which also became one of the model plants for microbiome research, the apple. A lot of research has been conducted on the apple microbiome in recent years. We know that the apple plant hosts diverse microbial communities that can also play significant roles for plant health and development. Remember from the previous chapter, each plant species hosts a specific microbial community, which is either enriched from the microbial pool in the environment, mainly from soil, or transmitted vertically from the mother plant to the next generation. The same applies also for apple. However, one important characteristic distinguishes apple and other fruit crops from remaining plants. They are grafted. This means that a shoot of a selected apple cultivar is attached and grown on a specific rootstock. This is done for several horticultural reasons such as size control, fruit quality and pathogen resistance. For understanding the apple microbiome, grafting is an important factor, since with rootstock and the grafted shoot, we have now two different plants, so do two different genotypes, and both play a role in the assembly of the microbiome. Interestingly, closer related apple cultivars show a more similar microbial community than less related cultivars, independent of the rootstock they are attached to. A cultivar specificity of the microbiome has even been detected on a global level. It was shown that a subset of potentially beneficial bacteria and fungi is associated with one apple cultivar grown all over the world. However, in this study, the major impact was still assigned to the geographical location. This simply shows again that soil and environmental conditions largely determine which microbes colonize the plant. Imagine, the apple microbiome can even be traced back to its ancestors. Apple was domesticated about 4000 to 10,000 years ago in the Tianjian mountains of Central Asia and moved along the Silk Road with travelers and traders. Domestication and breeding resulted in apples of larger size, richer in nutrients, but also reduced ability to defend itself against pathogens. Changes are also visible at microbiome level. The microbiome of modern apple cultivars show some similarity to the microbiome of their wild ancestors, but both groups differ significantly from wild non-ancestor apple species. This study supports the well-accepted theory that domestication and breeding altered the microbiome of crop plants, but also indicates co-evolutionary patterns between plants and microbes. In the previous chapter, you also learned that all plants consist of certain compartments where different metabolic conditions prevail and that microbes colonize them based on their neutral preferences and their functional properties. The same is also true for the apple plant. The apple rhizosphere has been investigated intensively by plant pathologists due to economically important soil-borne diseases such as the apple replant disease. This disease is still of great concern since it's not caused by a single pathogen, but by a complex of pathogenic fungi, oomycetes and nematodes, and thus very difficult to control. The rhizosphere microbiome, however, can act as a barrier to reduce infection of roots by the pathogens. In addition, mycorrhiza and growth-promoting bacteria have been assigned to the apple rhizosphere. But also within other plant compartments, several plant beneficial microbes have been detected. The colosphere is the microbial habitat of bark and stem. Here, conditions for microbes are rather harsh, nutrient poor and dry, but at the same time quite stable, and the associated microbiota are often rich in abundance and diversity. When we move upwards, the colonization density is generally decreasing. The phylosphere provides very unstable and nutrient-poor conditions and represents a rather extreme environment, considering temperature, light exposure, UV radiation and rainfall. The leaf endosphere is more stable than the surface, and microbes that reach this inner space often form a close and intimate relationship with their host, which makes them also interesting for research and agriculture. The anthosphere is the microbial habitat of the flower, and research on apple discovered a lot of its general microbial composition and function.
Here, microbes find more favorable and nutrient-rich conditions, and they also find so different so-called microhabitats, such as petals, pollen or nectar. All of them can host different microbiota. Flower communities are also highly interesting for research, since they can contribute to the assembly of seed and fruit microbiomes. So the most interesting compartment, at least for us as consumers, is the apple carposphere. The fruit also consists of certain microhabitats, such as stem end, pulp, the core, including the seeds, the peel and calyx end. And again, all of them host microbial communities that differ in diversity and numbers. In one study, it was found that an apple fruit can host up to 100 million bacterial cells. And you'd be surprised. In this study, the majority of them was not found on the peel, but inside the core. Certainly, the apple fruit microbiome is an important factor for the product itself. And I guess most of you are aware that the perfectly shaped, flawless and firm apples we usually find in our supermarket shelves are rather the consequence of great agricultural effort and pest control, which is necessary to withstand the often high incidence of diseases. We know that different management practices influence the microbiome of crop plants, also that of apple fruits and health-related consequences are not exclusionary by default. Recently, it was shown that plant-associated microbiota, including bacteria, fungi and viruses, survive the gastric passage and can at least transiently colonize our gut. This means that besides the vitamins and nutrients an apple provides, it can also be a source of microbes for us. However, the microbial diversity associated with vegetables and fruits, whether they become members of our gut microbiome and which functions they might exert, is still largely unknown. So to sum this chapter up, the apple plant serves as a valid model to illustrate our current knowledge on the plant microbiome. In summary, the apple microbiome is affected by the host genotype or cultivar, the phytochemical composition, the geographical location, the degree of domestication and agricultural management practices. The importance for host health, as well as the potential applicability of the microbiome to substitute chemical treatments in agriculture, is highly promising. And this exactly will be the topic of our next presentation how to make use of beneficial microbes for ecosystem-friendly agriculture. See you there.